Hey guys, this is David aka Jensen from Questionable Plays and today we have a recap video about our BT17 case tournament that happened on August 10th which was last Saturday as of recording it now and I have a special guest with me. I have Bobby who was my support during the whole tournament. So hello Bobby. Hey, what's going on everybody? Um, yeah, like David said, I was there to support. Uh, Questionable Plays is something that I started with Fight Forever Gaming a lot of years ago, and we moved over to a better name, I think. Uh, and, it's definitely uh, more catchier. Yeah, it definitely is. It's more fun. It's more fun. And, uh, you know, David's taking us places, so it's nice. So I'm always here to support. And, uh, yeah, no, we had a really nice case tournament for BT17. What was what was the name of the, the Secret, set? Secret Crisis. That's what it was. It was a movie set. Yes, it was a movie, it was yeah, a movie was. set based on many Digimon movies, including the first one that came out, I believe, in, like, 2001. Oh, nice. The, the, the best one. The yeah, one. <laughs> the best one with the weird, uh, do you remember that weird, like, opening with that weird animation featuring, like, and what is her name? Angela or something? And it was, like, this, like, weird cartoon girl. I'm not sure you remember that opening. Yeah? I'm not gonna lie to you. No, I don't. Okay, well, it was not that great anyway, so it's cool. Yeah, so anyways, awesome. we had a lot of fun, so I'm just gonna flip through a couple of highlights from our tournament. It was a lot of fun that day. 27 people, definitely a good showing. This is the ad that my sister made. Um, Bobby made a special request to have the Avoramon kind of like, kind of torturing Omnimon a little bit, so we definitely had that inspiration going on in this art. The, if you can see in Geoboromon's hand, is actually pieces of Omnimon's armor. Oh, I just realized that. That's actually very cool. Yeah, it was a, it was your quest. You wanted Geoboromon to mess with Omnimon in some way. Yeah, I guess, I guess, no, no, I mean, this this turned out really well. I don't know what I was thinking in my head, but this turned out way better than what I thought. <laughs> I'm glad. I won, essentially. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. Also, you know, let's give a big shout out to Kenny and the guys from Rogue State, Kenny, Parker, Kennedy. Like, they hooked us up. They really let us run that place how we want to and, like, treat the people how we want to treat them. Mm -hmm. And I can't express it. Kenny's a great dude. Like, he runs yes. his store. He runs a tight ship. It's great. I'm really glad we could use that space. And to many, many more events. Oh, yeah, definitely. I am beyond ecstatic that um, he continues to just let us just, you know, run the show. And he actually gave us a lot of accolades in a recent uh, membership meeting that he has, like, on a, I think, a monthly basis. And he said, like, we just do an amazing job. Like, we always, like, you know, provide everything we need for the tournament. He never needs to, like, worry about stuff. He's just very overall happy that we are taking the charge in doing events that we would like to do. And he's just happy just to support us all the way. Yeah. Yeah, shout out to you, Kenny. Thank you, Rogue State Games. And speaking of Rogue State Games, we are actually teasing our EX7 Digimon Liberator case tournament happening on September 14th. Um, this is featuring Digimon like Lilibon X, Sendromon, and Sephagamon, new Digimon coming into our scene. And of course, the return of Beostarmon in her new X antibody form. So me and Bobby are going to be very, very excited planning this out, and we'll hope to see everyone for September 14th. Now, this is going to be great because people have been waiting for Beelstar to come out. Like, I know she got, like, a quick little card in uh, in the starter deck for mm -hmm. Beelzebub, but that's not, that wasn't Beelstar's support. Yeah, no, yeah, it was more Beelzebub, Mill, and Beelstar was kind of, like, the, the supporting character. Now this is, like, her chance to be, like, the main star again. Yeah, and it's an interesting thing when you look at Lilithmon, now thing, I, I can't remember if I mentioned it to you before, but I think Lilith, this is the first FX antibody outside of Bialzamon, right? Yes. Um, for the yes. Demon Lords? Yes. So, oh, 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 no, never mind. Um, the other oh, one. Oh, Leviya, Leviya X. Leviya, yes. get one. So I wonder, I wonder if they're going to keep pushing these every set now, because now we have Barbermon, so they're all out in the game. So the Compendium has been updated with, I think, all the demons and including angels having their ex antibody form. So maybe something in the future for sure. But yeah. overall, I think everyone is is actually genuinely excited to see like a new IP as well as very familiar faces to be coming back. Oh, right. no, that's good. Yeah, that's very good. And a shout out to our friend Fabian. He actually made our first trophy to be prized out the first place and this is the picture i took of it it looks beautiful 
yeah, we've done very well. He surprised us with it last minute. Yeah. And he's going to help us with some more. We're going to try to expand this from not just first place, but maybe like first three, maybe try to figure out some medals and stuff like that as we get bigger. Yeah. And start showing up. Oh, yeah, no, I was floored that he just surprised us, like, I think Friday. Yeah, it was Friday. I thought, actually, he would not get it done, and I told him, like, it was okay if it didn't, but turns out he managed to get it done, and we were able to snag it. It was great. No, it, it turned out so beautiful, and I think we had some comments from, like, people not playing, saying that they would play for the trophy, so that was actually pretty cool. Look. I didn't know that. That's good. And big shout out to Lewis. He's the one who made the last minute drive up there to grab the trophy while we were setting up for the tournament. So big shout out to you, Lewis. Thank you, Dirty Hipster. Coming hey. in clutch. Hey. And I'm just going to show off some highlights from the tournament. Like these are just familiar faces we have from both uh, the Toy Wiz local and the truly urban local. And of course, players from Connecticut, New Jersey. Like we had a mixed crew coming out. To um, to see us like almost every month. It's just wonderful to see familiar faces, um, new faces, and obviously like it's so much fun. Oops, I went a little bit fast. <laughs> this is the, this is one of my favorite pictures. This is like the crew that I kind of like um, brought together at the Toy Wiz store. And it's really nice to see them come together to support us when we're trying to run our own events. No, it's always nice to have a community to grow and stuff like that. And it's nice that we were able to tether Truly Urban into <clears throat> toy Wiz and stuff like that. But David, can you go back one slide? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is a picture of our top eight. Yes, um, part of our top yeah. eight, actually. No, this is, is top eight. Oh, yeah, is this is everyone. Oh, I didn't yeah, know they were all at one yeah. table at one point. That's funny. Well, no, we put them, we put them all there. Like, well, oh. I, them, but I was like, hey, because we needed space to run the other tournaments, you know, to make you know, because we wanted to run the side events and stuff like that. Oh my god, I didn't know the timing of this photo. That's so smart. I like that. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah, they're all there. It's <laughs> from uh, from the left going top. It's Alex, Cliff, Michael, Cedric. And then from the top right, I guess you can't really see Nick's face, but it's Nick, Lance, Carl, and Travis. And when I tell you I, I interacted with Travis, uh, who got second place for the first time, like really interacted with him. And when I tell you, he's one of the nicest, most like courteous people I've ever met. It's it's just, it was just crazy. And shout out to you, Travis, cause uh, you're just nice. You're yeah, just a nice Yeah, dude. no, I, we, I remember um, when I was first added to the, to one of the chats that I'm in for, with these guys also. Yeah, Travis was just a really, really nice dude. I'm like floored how like really nice he is. And I hope he continues to come to our events because definitely I want to see what else he can do. Yeah, yeah no, no, he's going to, yeah, no, it's going to be great. It's going to be mm -hmm. great. All right, I kind of spoiled this, but this is the total tournament breakdown of all the decks that appeared at our tournament. We even had like really interesting decks like Grace Novamon, a fully dedicated Rapidmon deck. We even have Ancient Greymon appearing at one and Diaboromon, which did get a lot of support in EX6 and BT17. I don't think it's gonna make a huge meta splash outside like locals and stuff. Like regionals and stuff, he might not make an appearance, but it is kind of nice to see some dedicated pilots pulling up and seeing what they can do. Yeah, so real quick, so with the Fenrir Lugamon, whatever that card is, uh, <laughs> I made a mistake on that one. Now looking at it, I somebody was playing Dex what is it, Dex Duramon? Yes, Dex, 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 Doru, Dex Doru Goramon. Yeah, there you go. That Somebody was playing that that day. So that that should be five, and then Dex Duramon, you know, just going to point that out. Should be one, um, right? Yeah, it should just be one. And gotcha. Fenrir, yeah. Gotcha, because and they then, do share the same base, actually. So I think on first glance, people can easily, like, mistake it for, like, a Fenrir Lugamon deck. That's exactly what I did until I looked back on it. And then yeah, some yeah. other notable mentions is... The Magnamon X players, uh, both of them were using uh, just armors. So there was Rydramon. Yes. I don't think they both had the new Flame Dramon. I think only one list had it. Yeah, the promo Flame Dramon is pretty hard to get, and it's a really good card. I'll show it right here. It's a really good card, and I think now going forward, every Magnamon X blue base deck is going to be running that at four because it's just extra damage and also. It's a great way to like um, help Magnamon X close out games faster because it 
I noticed that for the blue base for Magnemon X, like, they need a lot of maintenance after your first evolution because it's really hard to trigger his evolution effect again if you don't have, like, the yellow stuff like Nyaromon and all the trashing security effects that are available in the vaccine variant. No, that's that's a good thing to point out. The other thing that Flame Dramon also helps with is with all the Uko mods because yes. it raids, it kills the Ukos, mm -hmm. then it trashes the security, which yes. is... Yes, correct. Yeah. Now, Magnemon X does not need to fully solely rely on the starter Dex Magna for removal, early removal. They can now use Flame Dramon to raid in. And also, like, technically, they could do a cool combo with Flame Dramon, raid into, like, you know, a big body, burn the security, well, add it to hand, but similar thing. Armor Purge, and then go into a Magnemon X, then trash, remove something. Like, I think the combo lines are actually very interesting with the Flame Dramon promo. The fact that it actually does one life of damage almost no matter what and then you can just continue doing other plays to hopefully maximize your tempo which i think is pretty cool for the deck eh? no no it helps a lot and then uh something else that i noticed in this deck the mirage galgamon was playing ancient gurumon as the top oh my end. god yes it was like yeah, a it was half, really and half i saw well, half ancient gurumon engine and then half mirage i was like yo this is crazy yeah it was just a promo that's that's what he's doing the promo lobomon the one that when you swing uh or is on digivolve it's, it's one on of those Evo. it's on evo it's on evo yeah it's the goonimon that swings mm -hmm. yeah so it's kind of cool when you get that one out and it's nice it's really um, interesting to see like people take an ancient room on into decks because I think it is just a natural fit in blue. No, it's it's really nice. I mean, he was. I watched one play where he summoned the guy. He sorry, he did the Lobomon, swung, went into Ancient, bounced the guy, bounced the security. Then when Ancient Gurumon died, when Ancient Gurumon died, he just played out. Uh, a Thomas. Uh, he played a tamer yeah he played a thomas and then he just went into like he just built his guy up again it was kind of cool it was very cool it is very cool and the fact that you could he's also he also was playing digimon emperor by the way so you can actually drop digimon emperor from mac from uh, Asian, right. if you from wanted Asian. to yeah. yeah it's very it's a it's a been a really cool card in um in blue lately i'm just really happy that it exists because i realized you could splash it because being blue yellow means yeah it's gonna be splashed in a lot of decks yeah no ancient guru Man is a fantastic card and it's mm -hmm. it's really strong all right let's just move on to our top eight and of course final standings so the top eight we had two new maids two vaccine armors two Fenrir Lugamon's, actual Fenrir Lugamon decks, and one Imperial and one Ancient Garugamon deck. I was surprised. There wasn't a lot of Imperial and Ancient Garugamon, and they actually made it up here. That was actually pretty cool. Le well, the Imperial Dramon deck was teched out to the max. It was playing like Magnamon X. It was playing uh, uh, Hidden Potential. It was playing the New Tamer. Like oh, it, was, really? it was playing wow. a lot of, yeah. It was a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, and honestly, like it was kind of wicked. Like. You would think because he's playing all these cards at one, he wouldn't get to them, but he did. The deck does naturally draw a lot. I think you played it for a while, and I think, like, you almost decked out at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you draw very quickly in the deck, and it's kind of yeah. nice to have the Paladin mode to uh, to to be able to recover all these cards. I, it's weird because I knew Paladin mode was very strong, and then this weekend I saw it firsthand, and I was like, wow, this might be the strongest card in the set. Yeah, no, Paladin mode, even though it doesn't do in removal i think there's just a lot of cool interactions that happen when the card is being played that really makes it really powerful i think it doesn't do immediate anything because it doesn't technically remove anything yet it just strips a lot of, a lot of sources and resets your trash back into your deck which is not bad on which is not bad when you hear it and you're kind of wondering like how do you really use it it actually can technically save you it also makes all your purple matchups kind of like almost invalidated because now all their trash that they spent building up since turn like one to two is now like gone like all those turns are just like gone now and that option card is nutty oh god <laughs> That card, that new option card, I read it, and I was like, oh, you can just go into any of them. Yeah, I'll put it up here, just so you guys can see. Yeah, Return, I think it's called Return to the Primo Genitor. Yes, yeah, a weird name, but yeah, that, that option is nutty. It's like the pure anti-purple option card. Like, oh, you want to get rid of my guy? Oh, never mind, I just got to go into Mega again. It's like, oh, ew, why? <laughs> That's it, yeah. No, it's it's so up. sick. And of course, our final standings. First place is Vaccine Armors. 
uh, piloted by, of course, Nick. Second place is Dumimon, piloted by Travis. Third place was piloted by um, Lance, who also played Vaccine Armist. And fourth place was piloted by Carl, which was the Fenri Lugamon Take Mikazuchi deck, which is, of course, a new deck for BT17. Yeah, no, no, that that deck is swaggy. There's a lot going on there. Like, oh, there was I love a... the high roll. I love the high roll so much. It's great. Yeah. And it was nice to see people playing the new cards. Mm -hmm. I, that, I think, was my more favorite part about that. Uh, everybody had the new cards. Obviously, New May doesn't really have anything new. I mean, maybe there's like a tech card in there or something, but everyone was playing like new, the New May that's been running around for the past six months. Oh, yeah. No, New May barely changed because the core engine is just really strong. I mean, we are getting a ban list soon, so <laughs> maybe we'll see some changes. But um, yeah, New May barely changed, which is nice. It just has more variety to top it down because, as you know, we have a Garumon, we have some new yellow megas, new like black megas. So definitely like something to definitely consider in the future if you're building new melee. Like, you can have a very diverse uh, top end. Yeah, I mean none of them beats uh, Valkyrie Mon, but the, uh, the the idea is there. I think that's still the best one. Yeah. That's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. That that it was just really nice seeing new cards. All right, let's move on. So another picture of our top eight. Uh, this is the funnier photo <laughs> because Carl is like turning sideways. Probably wasn't even where we were taking the photo. <laughs> no, clearly not. Clearly not. Clearly but, not. Uh, yeah, so Cedric was undefeated in Swiss. And yep. then unfortunately he lost his top eight match. Yeah, no, I he did so well in Swiss. Super well in Swiss. I was actually amazed how he just high rolled each game like i think i'm not sure you saw this there was one game where he hard slammed two kazuchi mods and won oh no i don't know that one that's nuts no I, it, I it was on stream too you know i can't wait till you see that match yo it was crazy he um slammed both and won that game that's kind of nuts doesn't that card called cost 12. yeah his opponent must have bricked yeah, it was crazy. It was actually crazy. I won't spoil too much more about that match, about that match, but it was crazy how he won that particular game just by doing that, and it was amazing. It was beautiful. It was like a lot of people were saying like it was like the anime moment. Like I don't know, he, they like don't know how he did it. Too. It's hard of the cards, man. That's how they get. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on. So, let's start talking about our top four decks. Of course, first place is Vaccine Armors, piloted by Nick. And this is a very standard Vaccine Armor list. I don't think there's anything really crazy about it. We have the Kuda, Pada, the Pillow, just to answer Numemon, and of course, like, Imperial Jamon, the Rapid, Goldies, Magna, Ace, and of course, our two lovely uh, Golden Boys. The Death X was one of his, I think, personal techs, and I think everything else is pretty standard. Yeah, I mean, we have a deck list up, at, <clears throat> up on YouTube, on the channel, you know, so you guys can go check that out to understand, like, why he was playing, like, how his matchups were and, like, how he thought about it. Because okay. I know the biggest change compared to all the other builds was the egg choice, mm -hmm. as it was one Naramon versus the one uh, versus the four Topamon. Yeah, I think, it, like, I think it depends on, like, people's personal preference on, like, do they want more draw slash consistency, or do they want to be able to maintain their Magnamon X a lot better? Because that is actually one of the challenges of Magnamon X, is actually maintaining his immunity, which I think that's why, like, I want to give the deck a little bit more credit because it's not just evil and then you can just like be powerful for the rest of the game. It's like, no, you need to like maintain it. Yeah, I mean, this is a good point. Like, Patamon or the Emissary, what is it? Messenger of Hope or Emissary, Emissary of Hope? Emissary of Hope, yeah. yeah. One of those cards gotta go, man. Like, this <laughs> is holy because it's so strong. Because I was watching him do Patamon, then do Emissary, and then it's just like he's got Magnamon X. That's and on top of that, he plays Magna Angemon, so he just recover one and then go into Magnamon X. It's, yeah, and no, it's like, Emissary of Hope is so powerful with Pada in this case, because if your starting hand is Pada, Emissary, and TK, you just rig your security with like a Rapid Mod or Rapid X, then you move up, go into Rapid Mod, then use Emissary, go into Rapid X in the same turn. And as if nothing has happened yet, because you just do that all within the same turn. It's like, it's crazy strong like you could turbo that fast 
And then you, of course, you have Awakening just like, you know, make it even more like devastating for your opponents. Like, oh, this Rapidmon is now a Magamon X now. And it's like, oh, cool, <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty wicked because <clears throat> what that play you just said, all the Rapidmon, both the Rapidmons cost four to Evo because mm -hmm. none of them are Arteriamon. Mm -hmm. And then it's four to Evo from any of those Rapidmons to Rapidmon X. So he's getting for one memory, he's going into Rapidmon X. It usually costs eight memory. Yeah, no, it's like the fact that he is able to do that all for essentially zero is it's it's bonk. Well, not zero, it's technically one, but still, it's one memory to you get the, you eight get the one memory, memory of value. It's crazy, yeah. Yeah, but remember, you get the one memory back from Adamon, so it's oh yeah, you're right. It is essentially zero. Oh my god, yeah, we just so love, we just don't pay retail, don't we? We just skip no, retail. No, no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but no, there's a deck profile up for that. Please go watch it. Yes, it's, please. It was very involved in this tournament. And of course, oh, here's okay. our first place winner with the trophy and everything. That's my boo. Oh, look at your face. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, we'll, we'll hopefully, he'll do it again. He also won our 3v3, by the yes, way. Yes, with his, with, his, with his crew. I'm very happy that he's like a two-time winner, actually. Yeah, yeah. No. All right, let's go to our second place deck. This is Nubimon piloted by Travis. We didn't get a chance to talk with him. Unfortunately, he did want to like go home, which was understandable. We ended pretty late that day. So I totally understood like, yeah, yeah, just go home. I know we have a long ride back. So um, pretty standard Nubimon list. Um, definitely we're playing all the Rebel and Floodgates in black. We have Chikuri, Chumon, and of course Kokuomon, which actually is pretty key. That's four. its name. Yes, so this God, I keep calling him the battery Digimon. I mean he does look like a battery. <laughs> like a taser or something like that. Yeah. But that's what I always God is Kokuomon, that's who that is. Yes, Kokuomon is says players cannot ignore Digivolution requirements. So basically this is very relevant in the Magamon decks because now they can't use Awakening on like say a gold Vigramon or a Rapidmon. They can't do that. They have to be able to evil normally if they can this is very this is more effective in blue base magna it's also very good against the ancient decks because ancient garumon and ancient greymon use the warp ability from their respective champions lobobon and aguni so basically this turns off the warp and you have to basically do other things like for example the hard play digicross or evil up normally which is pretty difficult for those decks because you don't play that many level five so kokumon is actually pretty effective it's just like i think i heard from travis that it didn't come up too often because normally people were just evil evil and normally so it's it you know probably didn't matter too much but however i do i still respect the the tekken for that oh, i mean you want to be prepared right because you think the ancients are going to be strong mm-hmm Definitely, you want to be able to like stop them from doing the like the like for example the Kendo Lobo Warp or the Burning Aguni Warp. To, like you gotta chill that because that's it a lot of also, damage. The Cocoon Bond also stops all the new option cards as well. That's correct. Like, all, the, all the new option cards. So that, I think that's a that's a big one. I I, I need to double check the movie cards unless they say ignore requirements. I'm not 100 percent sure. Well, I know that the Imperial Jumon one just says one of your Digimon can evolve into an Imperial Jumon, you know. Yeah, but you still need to follow the requirements, I think. Ah, is it? Okay, yeah, okay. you still need to follow the requirements. So Kakumon is strictly for the ancient warp and it stops awakening from just being used freely. So you can't just do Rapidmon Awakening into Magna. You have to do, you know, you have to figure out how to do it without Awakening if you leave Kakuomon on board. So, okay. yeah, Kakuomon is definitely making a shine now. I hope it stays relevant because it's just, I think it's just a really good underrated floodgate and now it's getting a lot of bit of shine. Anyways, Ukumon package. We all know we hate it. We love it at the same time. I know, I was talking to Travis about it that day, about like how Ukomon needs to get hit, but I don't think it needs to like, they need to limit both of them. I think they just need to like, uh, make it so you can't play both in the deck. And What's if there's the anything that should be yeah. limited, any that should get limited in this deck, either should be Monze X or Nume X. And I yeah. think just one of those should suffice. Yeah, like there's a lot of discussion about like, should the Ukos be choice restricted or should just the promo be going down to one? People also brought up Newman X. People also brought up Munze X. You no, know, this deck has three essential like cards that makes it like room the way it goes. But 
hitting one like is it enough do we need hit two like we'll see like next week i think um if i remember right uh bandai is releasing a restriction list only effective in jp at the time uh next friday so yeah we'll, we'll probably see. we'll see yeah we'll probably get something like ex7 or something like that the one thing i will point out is that i guess i'm too used to our local no this list is not playing the starter deck mat that's a memory tamer which is uh set your memory to three and if you discarded the card you get to suspend and you gain one memory i do understand why people don't play because it's technically a temple like it's technically a turn loss because i think you might just want to establish like bodies on board as fast as you can so spending a turn on a memory tamer doesn't make the most sense but I think it helps you deal with, of course, the next song I'm going to talk about, Digimon Emperor, which is both the bane of Numenmon, but also its greatest support card because it's extra draw power. Yeah, it's just, it's gross. Digimon Emperor just, that that card, it's nice to see more floodgates in the game, like, mm -hmm. like gamers or option cards or however you want to look at it. But it's it's literally all for new mates. I mean, yeah. look at the Ichigurumon decks, right? Like they're not even playing like the blue base, right? They're playing red base with the Ukomon package. Mm -hmm. You know, even myself, I'm I'm playing that kind of build. So it's, it's really like good. It's I, I played no, myself it's, a couple times. It's really really good. Dude. And that's a big part of why I think the Uko should go, just because it shouldn't. It goes away from what the, I guess the game originally was supposed to design to be. And I guess yeah, sure, it's changing into like its own thing, but. Any deck that has weak rookies but has strong champions that are cheap are is always gonna play the Ukos. Yeah, yeah, I I will agree with you on that. Like I did actually play Ukos in uh, Grace Nova for a little bit, and yeah, it it makes sense. Like if you don't have good rookies, you just play Ukos to compensate. Yeah, and then the fact that the champions are three cost, then they cost as much as the rookies. You yeah, know? so that's yeah. the other thing that hurts. Which is also one of Numimon's strengths actually it's actually one of also new Mon's strengths is that technically your champions are rookies which is pretty cool actually i would still give it that yeah yeah all right let's move on of course this is the picture of travis <laughs> he is so funny <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't know if he was looking at the camera i think he mentioned in chat that he does this on purpose oh i respect that yeah i respect it too <laughs> all right third place um Still backseat armors, but you can see it's a lot more teched out, dude. Oh, I like the Patamon, the pro yeah. the movie yeah. Patamon. The movie Patamon. That triggers. Yes. Yeah, that, that literally grabs every monster in his deck outside mm -hmm. of um Kudamon outside of the rookies and uh and the Venus Mon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and I like this tech actually. I like that tech. Dude. Um also there's a paladin mode. Yes. I, I like that too. That's probably just to clean up any bad matchups. Like, you know, uh, obviously Demon Lords is like a free matchup for Magnamon X. As, as long as you can get to it, it's a free matchup. Mm -hmm. But uh, it also helps against like just the mirror. Some. I think the mirror if they don't have the oh, yeah. mirror egg. Like um, technically, because yeah, no, actually, Paladin mode is actually very very good against the mirrors and Magnamon X in general because if they don't have the protection, you just ace. You strip all their sources, and now they can't restand, and now all, all their effects are turned off because they don't have armor form, they armor form mm -hmm. resources anymore. So it's like it's kind of huge. And now he just swings and bottom decks all of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Imperial yeah. Palamon. I wonder how how well that did for him for that day. I think he. I think I was chatting with him. I think he said it came out once or twice. But it's a tech card. It's also one of like it's hard to gauge those. But hey, look, I mean. He probably also just liked the card. Like, the card is good. Like, the card is great. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I don't disagree. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Our fourth place deck is, of course, the new deck for BT17. This is Fenri Lugamon Kape Mikazuchi. Try saying that five times fast. <laughs> a lot going on here. <laughs> yeah. So, Carl was playing this. Um, I think he was playing a list similar to Cedric, but I think, of course, there are some differences here. Like, for example, of uh, no Ukumon, so no BT16 Ukumon. He's actually playing four and four of the Lugamons, the best boys, and he's actually using um, the Rugamon as his supplementary champion instead of Tyrannos and Lugarmons, which is interesting, yeah? 
He might have not been trying to play any monsters until he had to. Yeah. Because I see he's still playing Miss Memory Boost, obviously mm -hmm. the Airwall Boy, which is like fantastic. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that's another card that could probably just go away. Um, which one? Analog boy. <laughs> you don't Whatever. think it's too late for that? I think we are very, very I mean, far. <laughs> I'm just not a fan of like generic search cards. That, that's just always been my thing. But I get it. I mean, if it's helping this deck, it's helping this deck. Some decks, they need that little oomph. You know, they need that little push. Yeah, but because I, really I think Fenry does struggle in like... If, if we did have Analog Youth back in Fenry back in like BT14, it was hard to like set up and to like continue your tempo because unfortunately most of the time in BT14 you were using Hell Lugar to clean up like a stack that you need to get rid of and unfortunately mm -hmm. you have to restart so that's where the analog keys come in. So no, it's like, absolutely. that was always a big part of it. Yeah, but I understand why he's running the Durugumons because they all say when Evo, draw one, pitch one. So this is a very easy way of pitching the Kazuchimons to be used for later. And luckily, they evolve over SOC monsters, like uh, Lugamon, for example. So I think this is just to help him easily get his trash set up for the big, you know, Fenrir Lugamon turn, which is, of course, um, when you go into the new Fenrir Lugamon, if you have Kazuchimon in trash, you get to special summon it, and then you can trigger the trash effect of Takamikazuchi to then DNA and then keep turn because it sets your opponent back to three. And the inheritable of Fenry Lugamon is the same one as the old one. Mm -hmm. So it's as if like you you did all this giant play and somehow it's still your turn. That's what's the power of this deck. I mean yes. he went, I think he went X1 yes. during Yeah, he went X1. Yeah, X1 during Swiss and got fourth place in top eight, which is honestly again for a high roll deck, that's really good. Like it's really good. I wanna try building this myself. And I do respect the Crimson Blazes here. Like I kind of respect that a little bit. It helps with the it helps with the, the new main matchup. That's yes. probably the worst matchup for this deck. Mm hmm Agreed. Like as soon as you play the Tyrannomon, if you see a bunch of Lunas, just Crimson Blaze, clean up, and now they can't like they can't special summon themselves, which is good. Like it buys you that time. You even gotta go that hard. You play the Lugamon, sorry, the Lugamon that's the red and purple, the one from BT15. Oh yeah, even better. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're just, right. Even better. Yo, that oh, I yeah. love the fact that we're having like very easy access dual color rookies because then it enables like builds like these like oh we have a random like red option that we wouldn't normally be able to play like do you remember like back in like the old days where like doing texts like these would just like you know bite us in the butt because like we're missing the goddamn color exactly yeah yeah then you just draw <laughs> red cards no it's good it's good so this deck technically is what three colors uh let's oh, see four. purple right. red yellow green technically four yeah, colors yeah. technically four. Well, oh well, no no five Purple, red, black, yellow. Oh, it's five colors. Wait, who's black? The Rugamon. The Rugamon. Oh, that's right. That's right. Right. The champion. Yeah, purple, gonna... purple, black. So there's five colors here. It literally has every color in the game. Yeah, we're just missing white and blue, which I, <laughs> I don't think we need yet. No, 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 no. <laughs> no I'm no, sure. No, no, no. <laughs> well, that's not well, supposed to be big Rugamon, but we're not there yet. <laughs> All right, that's our yeah, that's good. deck. And that is basically it. It was overall a really fun event. Of course, I just want to remind everyone about our EX7 tournament that is coming up in September. Of course, we'll be held at Rose State Games. We'll have more details in the coming days. But overall, my closing statement is it was a great event. I love seeing everyone, like, you know, play what they love, play with the new cards. And I just love, and of course, me and Bobby just love hosting these events in general. Yeah, no, it was great seeing everybody again. It's always nice to get together, even if it's once a month to see everybody and to catch up with everyone. Cause it doesn't, you know, it's nice being with everybody cause it doesn't feel like a chore. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels like we're just there hanging out. We're doing our job, you know, mm -hmm. it's just nice. Yeah, it's, it's definitely very nice. Anyways, that is all for us. This is Jensen and David, uh, this, and that's from Bobby. We hope to see you guys again for our next case tournament. All right, take care. Bye-bye.